This video gives you a breakdown and ranking of every NBA team's best small forward, at a position that requires you to score on and defend in some cases the best players we've ever witnessed. This ranking is based off each three-man's production on both ends of the floor. First, a shout out to Kardik Sath saying Pascal Siakam's his favorite power forward, stating one of his favorite moments as Pascal's block on LeBron early this season. I definitely agree that was beastly. Great take from Kardik. Question coming up for next vid shout out yearly top five get rewards. For more info, you can DM me on Instagram or Twitter at DFlowHoops. And if you enjoy this ranking, feel free to follow me there as well. Number 30, Josh Akogi of the Minnesota Timberwolves. This doesn't at all mean Josh is one of the worst players at small forward. Remember, every player you're going to see ranked today is the best player on their team at this position. So don't get me wrong, Wolves fans. I think your wing Akogi has a ton of potential at 21 in his second season. He made headlines with a dominant shutdown and game-winning block on the beard back in his rookie year. However, in 2018-19, he shot just 38% from the field. Luckily, in his sophomore year, the slashing of Kogi's vamped his field goal percentage to respectability. He is still just shooting a measly 26% from deep, though. Number 29, Tony Snell of the Detroit Pistons. We're not taking into account how overpaid a player is, but I think it's important to note that Tony received $44 million in guaranteed money from the Bucks back in 2017. Now on the Pistons, he provides just 8 points in 27.8 minutes. The percentages seem impressive on the surface, but here's the catch. In 59 games, Snell shot an average of just 6.5 times per game, and that's for good reason. The man's fairly limited offensively. Number 28, Reggie Bullock of the New York Knicks. Bullock's played only 29 of 62 games so far, but was valuable when manning the small forward spot for the dictator ran Knicks. According to ESPN, the source for every real plus minus ranking you'll see today, Reggie was right in between some reputable three men in that telling advanced stat. Number 27, Trevor Ariza of the Portland Trailblazers. It didn't seem like long ago when Trevor Ariza was one of the best 3 and D players across the NBA with the Washington Wizards and then the Houston Rockets in his prime. That day's come and gone, but the 34-year-old can still get it done at a pretty damn solid clip. Number 26, Troy Brown Jr. of the Washington Wizards. TBJ has as much upside as anyone in the game. 2018's 15th pick at 6'6", was showing off his shifty handles and beastly athleticism in his second pro season. Troy was getting better with every game of experience he had, just getting more and more comfortable as a young player in this league. The 20-year-old can be as good as he wants. Number 25, Otto Porter Jr. of the Chicago Bulls. The second of four juniors ranked today, Otto was just coming back from a left foot injury, which kept him out 51 consecutive games. Porter Jr. is a nice pull-up shooter from distance when he's on, but struggles with his consistency and to stay healthy. My concern for the 26-year-old 8-year vet is that it's the third time in a year and a half where he sustained injuries to that same left foot. That could bother and diminish his athleticism in the future, therefore his value. Number 24, DeAndre Hunter of the Atlanta Hawks. Here's Quavo's reaction to the rook DeAndre Hunter's defense. Yes, sir, good D. That's good D right there. As I mentioned with John Collins in my power forward rankings, I believe Atlanta with John plus a pick and roll combination of Trey Young and Capella will ultimately be a top seed out east, and the 22-year-old future star in my opinion Hunter, having played in 63 of 67 games for 32 minutes each night, brings durability, defensive prominence, plus fundamentally sound distance shooting on offense. So DeAndre Hunter is another reason I'm intrigued about the Hawks' future. Number 23, Seti Osman of the Cleveland Cavaliers. In his third season from Turkey, the rising Seti Osman's got a seriously polished and dangerous creating ability off the bounce, and he's got some serious range from distance as he's shooting a career-high 38.3% from deep. Osman's still 25 years old, he had a ton of pressure replacing LeBron as the main three-man early on. That was an impossible shoe to fill, but he's flashed some nice scoring upside, and despite having a lack of athletic ability, he's an intelligently active defender. Number 22, Miles Bridges of the Charlotte Hornets. What a magnificent but overlooked step in the right direction it's been in 2019-20 for the explosive sophomore Miles. The MVP of the Rising Stars game has significantly vamped his scoring from his first year, and in North Carolina is growing into one of the more well-rounded young athletes in basketball. Number 21, Eric Gordon of the Houston Rockets. Off year shooting the ball in 2019-20 to say the least for Flash Gordon. I'm not just going to forget how EG showed up efficiently in last year's playoffs though. In those playoffs, he put up 18 per game, a field goal percentage and three-point percentage 
of 45 and 40, plus a block per night in 11 games. For that reason, he ranks over some impressive potential stars in a few years in Bridges and Hunter, but the 37% shooting doesn't do Eric any favors. Number 20. Harrison Barnes of the Sacramento Kings. Maybe not the perimeter stopper or springy dunker he was in his younger days, Barnes is now a valued leader for his young Sacramento King teammates and still puts up an efficient 15 points. Number 19, Kelly Oubre Jr. of the Phoenix Suns. You could be surprised someone who's had so many posters and such a breakout offensive season as he did this year ranks just 19th. While I've been shocked and damn impressed with how Kelly's offense has come to life in Phoenix, He's the 94th ranked player in defensive real plus minus at small forward. He's got to be more fundamentally sound defensively if he wants to rank higher at this position. Number 18, Will Barton of the Denver Nuggets. Paired with being a crafty playmaker, having pull-up ability and elusive springy finishing at the basket, Barton's also laterally quick guarding the perimeter. Will gives Denver a little bit of absolutely everything. He's not the lengthiest of defenders, but his energy gives him a steal per game. Number 17, OG Ananobi of the Toronto Raptors. All the talk at small forward for Toronto has been about Rondé Hollis Jefferson, who's been exceptional and would probably rank around this area if he was the best at his position on his team, but Ananobi racks up 10 more minutes than him, has played 10 more games than Rondé, and at 22, OG's already one of the most feared wing stoppers across the entire NBA. While taking three and a half threes per game on offense and draining a nice 38.1% of his shots from distance. And when this man has nights like the one you're seeing against the Nuggets on March 1st, when he had 32 points and seven steals, he flashes elite two way potential, but OG's gotta be more consistent to rank higher. Number 16, Joe Harris of the Brooklyn Nets. Given where he's most dangerous from, for Harris to have maintained the percentages that he averages is pretty stunning. Baiting defenders with his elite three-point stroke, Joe's ability to attack the rim off the bounce has drastically improved this year. Other than Spencer Dinwiddie, he's been the main reason Brooklyn's been in the seventh seed. Following up a league-leading three-point percentage tally in 2018-19 was going to be tough, but if you're a GM in the modern NBA in need of an elite shooter to elusively use pin downs to perfection, deep-range dagger artist Joe Harris could be the top option of any player behind the arc league-wide. Number 15, Tim Hardaway Jr. of the Dallas Mavericks. Shot creating artist and a tough guy to handle when he's attacking the rim. Tim's shown off his nasty deep range both catch and shoot and pull up ability all season. On the best team he's ever been with, Hardaway Jr.'s averaged career highs in field goal and three point percentage, coming through in big time fashion in the Big D. Number 14, Royce O'Neal of the Utah Jazz. While casuals are going to forget about his value because he only drops 6 points in 29 minutes, O'Neal's a top 3-5 to five defender mentioned in this video as his quickness, awareness, and physicality place Royce 3rd in defensive real plus minus at small forward right behind Kawhi and LeBron. He picks his spots fluently on offense, but for the 29 minutes he's out there for, you can bet this man's giving Utah relentless activity, helping to legitimize the 4th seeded Jazz defense. Number 13, Aaron Gordon of the Orlando Magic. He's had to move to the power forward with Isaac's injury, but a full-strength Magic squad features AG at the three, and the rebounding and athletic prowess puts Aaron among some of the top two-way contributors at the three or four. Along with the overwhelming board getting he brings to the table, I love the four assists he gives the Magic. But switch ends, and you'll see Gordon as an extremely sound defender both on the perimeter and at the rim, which is where he's most valuable in my opinion. Number 12, Andrew Wiggins of the Golden State Warriors. Simply because he didn't live up to number one pick expectations, I think Andrew Wiggins has become the most disrespected player in basketball. Being a number one or even number two option isn't for everyone. Andrew's had bad luck being forced into that position. Given the Splash Brothers are gonna operate in those roles for the dubs, Wiggins could make the Warriors a real problem again in the 2020-21 campaign. Andrews averaged over a steal and a block this year, and finally the right opportunities came about for him. He's valuable both with his lengthy athletic defense and versatile scoring. Number 11, TJ Warren of the Indiana Pacers. You're about to see who's number one in field goal percentage at small forward, but second is TJ Warren, who's leading a team in scoring that was competing for home court advantage in the first round. He's also a pesky big defender that put up over a steal per game, so an incredible pickup last offseason from Larry Bird. Number 10, Brandon Clark of the Memphis Grizzlies. 
meet the most valuable player you've probably never heard of, and the overlooked rookie in Memphis behind a lot of their stunning 2020 success. The 21st pick in last year's draft, Brandon Clark's proving to be a complete steal for the Grizzlies, ranking 8th in real plus minus at his position. As a rookie, Clark also led all small forwards in field goal percentage. His finishing off boards, post-ups, or pick and rolls led to a mesmerizing 62.5% clip. Also, Brandon shoots only about a 3 per game, yet makes an impressive 40% of those shots. Memphis has a potential beast at the 3-4 spot for this decade in Brandon Clark. Number 9, Gordon Hayward of the Boston Celtics. 2019-20 has been maybe the most dominant version of Gordon us fans have ever witnessed, quite possibly the best. You could give me an argument for why his play on the top-seeded Celts, after the tumultuous circumstances he dealt with in the two seasons prior, is the NBA's best storyline. Number 8, Shea Gilgis Alexander of the Oklahoma City Thunder. A two-way prodigy, Shea can get to his hot spots easily with saucy dribble combinations that freeze his opponents. From there, Shea's long 6'11 wingspan gets him whatever he desires at the rim. Mix in Gilgis Alexander's crafty attacking of the paint with his respectable shooting ability, Shea nearly added 10 points to his total per game from his rookie to sophomore year, so the sky's the limit for him. Number 7, Tobias Harris of the Philadelphia 76ers. When the word underrated's mentioned, I think of Philly's stretch four with Embiid or Horford sitting, but three man when those two start like they typically do. Tobias has the bulkiness, swift handle, and shooting prowess that relates him a little bit to Carmelo in his Knicks days, not saying he's close to that type of star, but when he finds his rhythm, whether Tobias is posting up or lighting it up from the perimeter, He's a massive threat for opposing wings and bigs. Don't underestimate the defense as well. Number 6, DeMar DeRozan of the San Antonio Spurs. San Antonio's backcourt of DeJounte Murray and Bryn Forbes has changed DeRozan's position from shooting guard to small forward. Evaluating him as the typical guard he is though, and if the regular season's over, DeMar would come up 0.3 attempts short of being the first guard since Michael Jordan from 1987 to 1991 to shoot at least 50% from the field and attempt at least 16 field goals per game. Some Hall of Fame-like numbers from Debo. Number 5, Brandon Ingram of the New Orleans Pelicans. Zion came back to steal any attention Brandon received for his breakout year. However, the former Lakers trade from the GM while at first seemed like a misfortune, now just seems like a blessing, as a change of scenery plus another year of development has granted the now proven to be utter phenom of a wing creator, B.I., an opportunity he's fully capitalized on. The man just made his first all-star team. Number 4, Jimmy Butler of the Miami Heat. Speaking of changing teams, here's Butler revealing what made him leave the 76ers. At what point did you, like, realize that? At what point did... And that fucking meeting in the office, and I told you that. I told you that. So Brett brings me, you, Joe and Ben. Joe and Ben. This is pre-Tobias trade. Yeah. And we're all sitting in there, and nothing got accomplished at all. So I was like, and I told you this as we walked out. JJ, why would I ever go back in there again? Like, nothing's getting accomplished. Nobody's saying nothing to anybody. And we just sitting in here watching film, and you can literally hear the thing just clicking. We all just looking around. <laughs> Some fine storytelling from Jimmy, I must say, but with more vocal, tougher players on his new Heat team, from Goran Dragic to a veteran like rookie and Kendrick Nunn, to the breakout Bam Adebayo or wing sniper Duncan Robinson, Jimmy seemed to have made more than the right move in free agency. Number three, Chris Middleton of the Milwaukee Bucks. Adetokounmpo's steadily elite second fiddle averaged nearly 25 after the All-Star break, and I just called Joe Harris best spot-up shooter in the game. But with the iconic Chef Curry, who's changed the game so drastically injured, I'd argue Middleton could be the best of not just anyone at small forward creating off the bounce and letting it fly from three-point range, but at least this season, any player league-wide at doing that. Number two, Kawhi Leonard of the LA Clippers. Based off Kawhi's continued mauling of the NBA after a postseason that'll live on for eternity, you could pitch me an argument for why the Claw's still number one in the world. If you're interpreting me ranking him as second because he's dropped off, that isn't the case. Fact is that the Charles Barkley dubbed cyborg Kawhi Leonard is a top three to five all-time great wing defender, and his utter shock rating mastery is still at its 2019 playoff level. Even though he was hurting all playoffs long in 2019, he put the six on his back and the load management he gets flack for this year is overblown, I think. He tortured his body in that postseason, many forget that, 
But what the all-time great never gets credited for because he's thought of as a quiet guy is his leadership by example, which makes W's for any team he plays for easy to come by. He's one of the greatest players of all time, and he's only 28 years old in the heart of his prime. Number 1. LeBron James of the LA Lakers I'm sorry Clippers slash Kawhi fans, I promise this isn't me being a salty Toronto native over the fact that Kawhi left us. Are you sure about that? What I'm sure about is, is that King James has regained the throne in 2019-20. In his last matchup with Kawhi, the King not only scored on the best perimeter defender in basketball several times, but made him look silly. Bron's revamped defense with another superstar next to him has made him shockingly, at 35 years old, look like the best player in the world again. From the beastly playmaking to the overwhelming drives we're seeing, this is an utter basketball genius and a physical specimen. You can place that crown on his head and leave it there for the foreseeable future as far as I'm concerned. LBJ deserves his respect as the greatest on the planet, hopefully entering another playoff run if we get basketball this year. If you enjoyed for NBA stories, team rankings, and top 10s, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything, and make sure you check out my power forward and center rankings. More content on the way that trust me you can't miss, so stay tuned y'all. This was D-Flow. I'll see you next video.